Now a scope and sequence sets out what you're going to teach and the sequence of how you're going to be teaching that content. So it takes all of the content descriptors, puts them in a particular order, has various points where a measurement of students' achievement is conducted, where we look at the achievement standards, and generally frames things in particular thematic units. So there'll be a certain amount of time that you have available for teaching your subject. Now this will vary depending upon the school. The Australian curriculum writers in developing the subject did have certain guidelines around the expected time that would be available for teaching the subject. And the curriculum was developed around those particular assumptions. Essentially for years um, seven and eight, it's around about 40 hours um, each year and similar for years nine and 10. Um, so it may not seem like a huge amount, but it's a reasonable amount of time, um, generally around about two periods a week. Um, so not as much as some of the other learning areas, but on par with other learning areas such as health and PE, um, history and geography, things of that nature. So schools though have a lot of discretion around how they allocate time to various subjects. In some schools, it may only be one lesson per week. Um, in other schools, it may only be taught in years um, in year eight and not in year seven. Or it may only be taught in one semester and then not the next semester. Um, so, for better or for worse, schools have got a lot of discretion in how they go about teaching the digital technology subject. And again, part of the promotion of your subject is around advocating for the time allocation to be um, spent on various subjects. Because schools in the framing of the um, Australian curriculum were set aside around about 50% of the time was elective time, where schools decided on which subjects were going to be more important, essentially how much time was going to be spent on the various subjects. So the minimums in terms of the Australian curriculum are just that. Now ideally we shouldn't go below the minimum uh, because that makes it very difficult to achieve the, the depth and the complexity of what's expected in the curriculum as it's been presented and framed. But it also means that there can often be a lot more time allocated. And in some schools where they have digital technologies as a priority, there will be a much greater time allocation. Um, unfortunately, in some other schools, it can sometimes be less. So I provided you with a series of um, scopes and sequences that are being used in a number of Queensland schools so that you can get some comparison of what's being taught in these various schools and how much emphasis is being pl placed on the digital technologies curriculum, but also on the topics and the themes that they base the curriculum around. It's not just a list of content descriptors. It's generally put into thematic units, because that's much easier for students to get their heads around and to engage with. So the idea of doing a thematic unit around creating a web production company that um, develops websites and so forth, or a thematic unit around robotics and having a robotics competition. Much easier to get students engaged with that than around a series of abstracted um, content descriptors. So you will frame your subject to make it engaging and enticing, but that is reliant upon the interests of your students, of the community, very often of parents who often be a, have a major say in uh, subject selection, but also around your own interests and your own passions that you can then instill in your students through how you frame your subject.